Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Terry. I make Philippine travel update. Today is February 5. Now we received a lot of, uh, not a lot, some changes on requirements for entry. Some were good, some were, no, some were fine, some were questionable. But let's start today's update with some good news. The arrival cup, cup, the arrival cap in Naia has been increased. So before, if you can remember, last uh, january 12 they slashed it into 3000 the good news is that starting february 4 which is yesterday it already started that the naia international airport's capacity will be increased to 5000 passengers per day and with that 5000 since february 10 nga, we will reopen to foreign tourists Fully vaccinated foreign nationals shall not be included in the arrival quota set by the DOTR and its one-stop shop. So mga foreigners po, hindi po sila kasali sa travel cap. Meaning, this 5,000 is only for Filipinos. Now, in my opinion, bakit 5,000 lang? From 3,000 to 5,000, the surge has already going down na talaga declined na masyado yung cases sa NCR and wala nang quarantine upon arrival so why is there still 5,000 arrival cap? at saka ang liit lang ng increase 2,000 lang eh wala nang ang quarantine sa mga fully vaccinated why is it only increased to 5,000? And why are only foreign nationals exempted from the travel cap? How about us Filipinos na fully vaccinated? Hindi ko maintindihan. But anyways, uh, appreciate na lang natin ang increase ng konti. 5,000 na guys. Hopefully, maramdaman natin. Hopefully, we will feel the difference with the plane tickets that are still soaring expensive pa rin. Diba? Mahal yung tickets. Wala na ang quarantine. Mahal pa rin yung tickets. In order for the plane tickets to go down, the, the travel cap, the arrival capacity must be increased further or tanggalin na yung travel cap. Anyways, for visa-free nationals, those who will be entering the Philippines, visa-free, which is in five days, yay! Five days, who will be arriving here February 10? Can you share? Put it on the comment section. Anyways, for the requirements for visa-free entry, there will be six conditions. Those who are covered will be required to follow this are former Filipinos, those who will avail the Balik Bayan privilege, including their spouse and children. And non-visa required nationals, foreign tourists from the 157 countries. And just a review, we already talked about this in detail in our previous video. Just a review for foreign nationals and former Filipinos, those who will be availing Balikbayan privilege starting February 10, you need to be fully vaccinated except for children below 12 years old. Then, you must have accepted proof of vaccination, negative RT-PCR test result 48 hours before departure from country of origin, then return ticket or ticket to your next country of destination, and then travel insurance with COVID treatment coverage of at least 35,000 US dollars. Let's talk about in details, especially the return ticket and insurance requirement. But let's start with first Balik Bayans. I was shocked to end them. Huh? Napaganon ako, guys. Bakit sila nila yung... Bakit sinali nila yung former Filipinos sa mga requirements na ito? Balik bayans, former Filipinos and their families, foreign spouse, children, have been allowed to the Philippines since December 2020. That was the time when Balik Bayan privilege was reinstated. And ever since, they've only had to show their old Filipino passport, or birth certificate, and then for the spouse, marriage certificate, for the children, birth certificate. And that was it. They was they were not required to show return ticket. And even the normal times, they are not required to show return ticket then. So nag I am s Hindi ko maintindihan bakit IATF you lump them, combine them with the foreign tourist requirements. I think a lot of our Balik Bayans are disappointed. Steve shared, I thought former Filipinos were already allowed entry to the Philippines. Yes, even before February 10, you can enter. 
So why are they now lumped in with other visa-free foreigners? Why do they need a 30 days return ticket? And what about a spouse of a dual Filipino citizen who will enter as balik bayan privilege? Do they need travel insurance and a 30 day ticket? Unfortunately, yes, because that is what's stated in the IATF Resolution 160. B. That former Filipinos and their spouse and children is included to these conditions because they will be entering visa free. No, nakaka disappoint. I'd understand. Sana more, sana is separate yung balik bayans from foreign tourists because in the first place, balik bayans, former Filipinos can stay up to one year, so they don't really need this return ticket or ticket to a next country of destination, not more than thirty days. Cause they can stay one year. Na kwano bayan. I'm hoping there will still announcements to clarify this because airlines will be following the IATF announcements. Now going back to the entry requirement, one of that is a valid ticket for their return journey to the port of origin or to your next port of destination not later than 30 days from the date of arrival in the Philippines. So for those who are planning to stay for less than 30 days, no problem because yeah, it fits the requirement. <laughs> While for those of you who, many of you who are planning to get married here, some will take time to get to know their Filipina girlfriend or boyfriend. Others just want to stay longer. Well, you can stay longer than 30 days. You can extend your stay. You just have to go to the Bureau of Immigration to extend your stay. You pay for a fee. The, the requirements are not complicated. I'll have another video for that. I'll also put in the description box the website to check for the requirements, but don't worry. This is not some complicated requirements. You just pay for a fee, get your passport. I have a friend who extended his stay just yesterday. It was Dan. I, know, I don't know if Dan is watching, but he extended his stay for another, another two months and he just paid 5,500. And this is not the first time he extended his stay there, here rather. While for those of you who want to stay longer, of course, we still have to comply with the uh, ticket for the next, not later than 30 days. Of course, airlines will ask for that requirement too. Immigration will ask for that requirement. So we must comply still. So the two options that I can suggest for this is to rent a ticket or get a throwaway ticket. There are services, companies that offer this rent a ticket. I know of two monkeys travel. They have this on their website. You can check them out. While for the throwaway ticket, I was checking today for a cheap flight. So throwaway ticket is when you buy a ticket to a nearby, going to a, a nearby country to the Philippines. Example, Thailand, or Singapore, or Indonesia. You know, anywhere cheap, actually anywhere in the world. As long as you get the cheap ticket, then this is a throwaway ticket. You don't fly, that, you don't fly but at least you have that as a requirement for compliance purposes only. So it should be cheap, right? Because you're gonna throw it away. And I was looking, uh, checking today for any cheap flights to near to the Philippines, Manila to Singapore I found is the cheapest. And I checked with Jetstar and they have for the month of February and March and even April and May, 3,600 pesos for a Manila to Singapore flight. Actually, let me show you. For your throwaway ticket, guys, Manila to Singapore, just to comply with the immigration requirements upon arrival. So go to Google, just go to Jetstar, and in the first result, that is it. That's Jetstar.com. So Jetstar, for those of you who don't know, is a low-cost Australian airline. They are owned by Qantas. See, they have deals. Manila to Singapore flights as low as 3,600. They also have Phuket flights, but they're uh, a bit more expensive, 6,000. This is why I'm suggesting, I am suggesting Manila to Singapore because they are the cheapest I have found. So Manila to Singapore. Okay, Manila to Singapore when? So depends guys, just remember that it should not be more than 30 days from arrival in the Philippines. So let's say you were one of the most excited foreign tourists, you will be arriving on February 10, then you can book your um, throwaway ticket anytime before, before March 11. So any date, it doesn't really matter. So I would say <laughs> just go with 
March 5. March 5, say, but if you guys are arriving at a later date, let's say April, let's see, oh, same price, 3648 Let's see, on May, would it still be the same price? Yep, yep, you can book your flights now, guys, throw away ticket even now. June is still the same. How about July? Yep, amazing. Well, for the insurance, I think that is my, my option I can share to you guys. Now, for the insurance, guys, well, unfortunately, balik bias are also covered to that. And foreigners, I mean, this is a sensible requirement. It's not just the Philippines, uh, UK, what else? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think UAE, uh, Thailand, they require insurance too. And it's a, it's a good thing to have in case you get sick. You never know. If you get sick here, at least you have some cover. You go to the hospital, somebody will cover your hospital expenses. The requirement is to, prior to your arrival, you must secure a travel insurance for COVID-19 treatment cost from reputable insurers with a, moment, with a minimum coverage of 35 US dollars for the duration of your stay in the Philippines. So let's assume that you will stay for 30 days. You can get an insurance just for 30 days. Anyway, they have that 30 days requirement ticket. So 30 days is all you need if you just want to comply with their requirement. I want to clarify this. Some people are asking, um, I have an existing visa. Am I also required? No, this insurance requirement is only for those coming as visa free entry visa free entry but if you're holding a 9a visa if you're holding an srrv if you're holding whatever visa 13a or 9f 9g no, you don't need the insurance okay that insurance requirement is only for those coming as visa free entry into the country now the insurance cost of course will depend of your numbers of stay country of destination amount of coverage now it does not mean that you have to pay thirty thousand dollars to get the insurance i'm seeing some comments here oh why do you have to pay so much no 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 guys the thirty five thousand dollars is just the coverage the insurance could be just thirty dollars or forty dollars you know po, it's just the coverage lang po yung 35,000. You don't have to have 35,000 in your account. No, it's just the coverage po ng insurance. Well, I mentioned in my community tab, in the comment section, safety wing, for those of you, um, you can simply buy them online. I put that, I'll put the, this, the link in the, in the comment section po. Um, they are for $42 for four weeks. If you want to get cheaper, Edit the end date, guys. If you're especially if you're staying shorter lang in the Philippines, let's say three weeks lang or two weeks, you can edit the end date and you will get it cheaper. But this insurance safety wing only covers until 69 years old people. Well, for those older or those who may have existing insurance, if your insurance covers hospitalization for COVID-19, COVID-19 treatment in the Philippines. And it has at least 35,000 yun nga COVID treatment. You may be able to just use that. Secure a statement of coverage from your insurer. And you should be insured even if you are in the Philippines, not just in your home country. That's what's important. While some, the insurance may be already included in their ticket. People who book their flights with Emirates or JAL, check with them po if included na i heard meron din silang travel insurance included sa ticket so just double check with your airline well for those without existing or not included in their tickets yeah you may have to secure one as i mentioned itong safety wing there there's the reviews are good naman and they are very well known by immigration officers because this is commonly used by filipinos leaving the country too yeah and i checked with them they can be used in the philippines they have up to 2000 they have up to 250,000 US dollars COVID-19 coverage. A question from Eldriza that I want to address. For former Filipinos, can they use proof of recovery when test positive to enter the Philippines? No. 
that um, option of showing recovery, let recovery letter, positive test results is only for Filipinos, not for foreign passport holders, foreign nationals. If you are a foreign national, a former Filipino, you need to test negative before traveling to the Philippines. Another question that I want to emphasize again, I just want to make sure travel insurance required, it says foreign nationals. For those that are from the USA, permanent residents, still a Filipino citizens and dual citizens exempted? Yes. If you are still a Filipino citizen like permanent residents or dual citizens, you are exempted from the insurance requirement, return ticket requirement, or even vaccination requirement. Kung unvaccinated kayo, because you are still a Filipino citizen. Hindi ka hindi mo need ng visa. Well, I want to share this for Filipinos coming home with less than 6 months validity of your passport. You can come home po kahit pa less than 6 months kasi pa uwi na kayo ng Pilipinas. Ang um, tricky lang po, hindi kayo pwedeng lumabas ng bansa kung especially short-term visas lang, mga tourist visa, at saka yung passport nyo, less than 6 months valid na lang. Yun lang po. And I want to mention again, mga Pilipino nag-recovered na sa COVID pero nagpa-positive pa rin, pwedeng pumasok pero hindi na kailangan mag-quarantine basta fully vaccinated. And that is all the updates for today. Some good news, yung travel cap, konting increase. While for yes, kababayans, balikbayans, former Filipinos required po yung insurance. Um, if you guys know of any other insurance that is good, then comment down below po. Let's help one another. While especially for um, foreigners older, 70 years old and up, I, I do not know, I cannot recommend an insurance for those age group. If you know of po, um, comment down below. Let's help one another nga. And this is all for this video po. I'll see you again with another update. And for anyone who will be arriving in the Philippines on February 10, whether that's Cebu or Manila or Davao, can you comment down below po? I'm thinking of going to the airport. I have, I'm, so, I'm a proud mother of foreign nationals. Yeah, I feel connection na allowed na sila. Anyways, yeah, comment down below if you will be arriving exactly on February 10, especially if it's in Davao. I don't know, I want to be there, maybe. I'm not sure yet, but I'll see you guys with another update if there's any changes. Hopefully, there will be no more changes. And I'm hoping that vaccination proof from countries without reciprocity agreement to the Philippines will be accepted. That's what I am pushing right now. Please help me out, guys. Reach out to Sir Teddy Boy Luxin or the Department of Tourism. One voice is not enough. If more people will reach out, then they will notice us. But this is all po. Stay safe po tayo and God bless. Bye.